Okay, so a lot of people see him as the victim and you as a perpetrator. And you see it exactly the opposite. Well, from a legal standpoint, yes. I was the teacher and he was the student and so I was the one who did get in trouble for that. From a legal standpoint, yes. But from a psychological standpoint, it's, it's so different because he, he knew that I was vulnerable. He caught me in my weakest moment, and he used that to his advantage. How did he know that? He, initially he didn't. When we began to get closer, I did confide in him. You confided your personal life to your student. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he didn't prey upon you because he knew you were vulnerable he started pursuing you because he found you attractive. Initially, yes. And then you were vulnerable to it because you were at a tough spot in your life. Yes. He first contacted you in September of 2015, right? Correct. And that was on Facebook? Yes. So you just are sitting home at night and you're on Facebook and he pops up and he starts asking you to meet him for coffee and lunch or something like that. Now at this time, he's not your student. Correct. You, he, you weren't at that school. Right. So how did he know you at all? Um, I had been a student teacher in the class that he was in. So at one point I did have him as a student, um, okay. not technically I guess, I wasn't in charge of the classroom legally, right. but I did know him through that. How did you finally decide, okay, I'm going to meet with this person? Well, like you hinted at initially, I did ignore a lot of that um, first because obviously I knew that was, you know, illegal, not allowed, frowned upon, everything. But one night after a particularly bad night with my boyfriend, we had gotten into a big fight, and the next day I looked at his message and I thought, I'm, I'm just going to respond. Nothing intense, nothing like that, just casual, hey, I'm going to be subbing at your school today.